Hi there, Gary Jenkins again on my road from redundancy to recovery. If you like what I have to say, please consider subscribing. If you would kindly give me a like, that happens to help a lot with analytics I'm learning. Let me jump on to the other video where I talked about um, what are your rights if you have been made redundant. Now, more information is always good. It's always coming forward. So here, let me talk roughly about redundancy. Your employer can make you redundant um, and they can do so in the situation where genuinely there is no other job in the workplace for the job that you were doing, um, that the employer has followed the procedure, uh, the guidelines have been established by various different organizations. ACES is perhaps the most famous in the UK. Um, what they have to do is they have to consult with the workforce that's being made redundant and they have to select the people for the redundancy. Um, they have to make sure that the decision that they have made is fair and your employer has made reasonable efforts to find you um, alternative employment within the company. Now, was the redundancy done for the real reason or was this a dismissal? That is something that can be decided at a tribunal. The tribunal is gonna look for some of the following uh, traits and characteristics. Uh, did the employer tell you about the possible redundancy? And could you have been told earlier? Those are two uh, questions that come up uh, most people who are being made redundant during this uh, time of COVID-19 where everybody was in a lockdown and then when you're getting ready to come back to work suddenly the employers are saying you know we're just gonna go to new technologies or whatever else uh, and uh, your position no longer is available they're allowed to do that that's not a problem but you also have to look at was the selection process fair was it uh, carried out in a way that they can defend it at a tribunal and were you given an opportunity to appeal the decision now the appealing of a decision starts off with your employee uh, handbook that will tell you what the company says is their appeal process and you must file the appeal within the guidelines of the handbook. So if you have been told of redundancy and you're still employed, most likely you um, are waiting on like a garden leave kind of a status where you really can't take another job. You have to wait until this job is over. If they call you back, you must return. That kind of a situation. But if that's so, then the decision for the redundancy may not be set in stone because of that. But you do need to check the, the employee manual. You may also wish to find that, well, I don't think they did it correctly because I'm aware that other people have come into the company and are doing work similar to what I did previously. Employers cannot just change a job title and give the same exact job to somebody else. No, that, that is found to be unfair dismissal. Um, when they go into uh, a, a redundancy situation, employers just can't say one person's job is now redundant and it's gone. Usually they need to create a pool of all the people that are going to be affected by the redundancy. And they have a scoring process where they go through and they score employees on various values that they, they as an organization, can pre-select. And you are entitled to know what your score was. And you are also entitled to know um, uh, if the process was based upon first in, last out. Uh, was there a scoring matrix? You have the understanding and the ability to say what was the matrix. I need to see how that was to find out. Um, did they use any evidence to support their claim? You should be able to see that. 
So if they went into your employee file and pulled out things from five, six years ago that said this should be in your file for six months and removed, and they're using that in their decision process, that is unfair. Um, and uh, they would be cause for discrimination. Also, was the scoring in any way discriminatory towards the individual that was uh, being uh, uh, reviewed. For example, if you had, uh, let's say, an employee evaluation where the employee has to write an evaluation type deal and the supervisor has to respond back, but never did. And that was used in the evaluation. Or never did, but never got your signature, never, never brought it back to you for review or comment or anything else. That would be discriminatory, and that is a problem. Now, when they're doing the scoring kind of process, the employer has to make a decision based on what they know about you, what's in your record, what is your uh, work record, your work product flow. All of those pieces of information are to be brought into the mix. But they also have to be careful that they're not eliminating a class of people, a particular person. I already covered this in the last video, so it, it, I would refer you to go back to that one and just take a quick look if you have any questions on this. Now, one of the things that I talked about in the last video was the fact that they have to make an offer of uh, a reasonable effort to help you find other work within the organization if it exists. It has now become very clear that there is precedent in the UK that the employer says, just go to our website and if you see something that should fit for you, uh, let us know. If that's all they do, there have been tribunals that said that was enough. It seems to me it should be a little bit more than that, but tribunals have said that was sufficient. If you don't take the opportunity to go back and look and see what's available and then let the employer know that you'd be interested in that process. Now, you shouldn't have to go through a massive interviewing round table of seven people going for the position. Your employer already knows you. They already know who you are. They already know whether you can do the job or not. And if you say, hey, I want to do that job and I can do that job and my work history shows that I can do that job and that it's on the same level of tasks that I had done previously. It's not like I'm looking for promotion or anything. It's the same level of task. There shouldn't be anything more than come in on Monday, you've got the job. Uh, the other aspect that you need to be looking at is some employers like to say everybody has to reapply. They were getting away with this uh, in some organizations, for example, when it was totally bought out, new people came in and they revamped all the job titles and everything and they said everybody had to come in. Well, if you are in a redundancy, that may be viewed as obstacles and may not hold up well under tribunal. Again, Gary Jenkins is not a lawyer. Gary Jenkins is a member of no bar association whatsoever. And all the disclaimers I have given in the past, I continue to give. I'm getting this information from Age Concern and from Citizens Advice uh, today that I'm, I'm handing to you because it's new information that has recently been updated that I have become aware of. So what I would say is if you've been uh, made redundant, if you want to have your job back, make sure that your employer knows that if your position is available, if the conditions that the employer told you would be existent that caused it, for example, we're shutting down that department, we've brought in new technology, if those two conditions or any of those conditions no longer exist, then you have a right to say, obviously that hasn't panned out. Why isn't my position or why haven't I been called back uh, is valid. Now, I know there's a lot of people who want to play a game with the employer. That game being, I want to hang out until I get the redundancy package 
and then I want to say I was unfairly dismissed or my position actually came open. They never notified me that it came open and they hired other people to take the place. Therefore, my employer should be punished. I understand tribunal services frowned on that. I can't find any case where they actually punished somebody for it. But then again, they may not do a punishment. They may just simply deny the claim. And that would be punishment enough. So here it is. This is Gary Jenkins. Again, not a lawyer, but take this information. Please go to your citizen's advice. I understand they're doing this COVID-19 thing. It's very difficult. They only open for a few hours in a day, only by telephone contact. You may have to cope with that. Age Concern is doing the same thing. Please, you're going to have to put some effort into this if you want to find out whether you can be reemployed. Contact your employer directly. Just confront them. Hey, uh, I understand you said that you're coming in with three forms of new software and that isn't true. That hasn't been in place. Therefore, the position I had is being done by somebody. Uh, please uh, tell me why I wasn't brought back in or was this a, a dismissal in the form of redundancy? The employer has to defend that. And if you, and you have the right, what's my score? Where did I fit in on the percentiles of the rest of the people who are being judged? If they can't tell you this information, then they probably didn't do it right. And you have more grounds and ask them, put it in writing. Tell me you don't have this, you know, because if you have the document, it doesn't become he said, she said, he wrote. And I say, you know, so Let's just move forward in the best realms possible if you want to get your job back or get yourself trained up and join me in the digital economy because I'll tell you, it is moving, it's cracking, and it's still in its infancy. Talk to you later. Bye.